one thing though, it's 2012 and in 2011 the Arab world has seen a lot of changes and so everybody is really nervous and nobody really wants to be filmed. I can understand that though, even in Europe you wouldn't walk up to somebody and just simply say right I'm going to film you and put the stuff up on YouTube. And that's why TV channels have consent forms and everything, so it's understandable. So that's why unfortunately in this film not many interviews and uh, no people. We have to take people's uh, feelings into consideration. It's not an easy time. So that's what it is. But we can still make a film about the ride itself, the cities and landscapes we pass through and discover some of the secrets of Morocco. The problem is that as a visitor you sometimes end up reading too much into things and things that are actually quite simple become massively complicated. Well, depends on your imagination if it takes you somewhere. Breakfast at the hotel and the Bankair company provides excellent and expert information on attractions along the route. After picking up the motorcycles from the garage, the journey to Casablanca and back starts, which will cover 1,000 kilometers and take four days. I've learned a lot from John in the 11 months that I knew him, about riding, about dealing with people and so on. And in a way, I feel that he's riding with me now because I've learned from him and I'm applying these lessons. Thank you, John. The scenery is brilliant as soon as one leaves Agadir and as the aim is to make a film about the journey, I stop to take pictures and film. However, I'm not too keen on the gravel that's on the hard shoulders. If you don't take it carefully, you might take a spill. Walking along the hard shoulder, you just have to make sure that you don't fall into one of the holes. Much of Morocco is mountainous, with the Atlas Mountains in the south and the Rift Mountains in the north. The Atlas form the backbone of the country, from the southwest to the northeast. Most people live in the north, while the south is sparsely inhabited, which is perfect for the ride. I was also amazed at how clear the roads here are, and the driving here is very considerate. Just the occasional car and lorry, so there is no stress whatsoever. And the types of landscapes change rapidly as well. And the most amazing thing is, a short while ago I was riding through mountains and now, all of a sudden, I'm in a desert. It's brilliant. Riding in unfamiliar landscapes also increases the sense of adventure one experiences and brings back a few memories of the London to Syria trip in 2010. This highway is the only proper road that allows the distance to Marrakesh to be covered conveniently and within the time available. But still, lots of the surrounding countryside can still be seen, so it's not too bad riding on the motorway. Morocco is very mountainous. There are many tunnels, long ones in fact, like the one coming up ahead. But these are all nothing like the ones in Austria that go on forever. I'm just so surprised how little traffic there is on the roads. Well, all this makes for a clear, trouble-free ride up to Marrakesh. Morocco is quite amazing. As you ride through it, there's a variation of landscapes. You see everything that you might want to see on a place like this. You've got deserts, you've got mountains, open landscapes, plains, green. I love it. I really recommend coming here. And then, of course, in some places, you see historical buildings as well. Don't know how old they are. Maybe some of them only like maybe a hundred years old or so. But on riding through on the way here from uh, where we? Ah, yeah, exactly from Marrakesh. It was quite interesting. We saw some really old, saw some really old buildings as well. Uh, very interesting. I have to read up on them on the internet and then add them to the film later. Using a hire company also provides the opportunity to test new motorcycles, which one may consider buying in the future, or just have an interest in to see how they perform in everyday situations. This four-day ride also allows to get used to it and see if it actually meets one's expectations and requirements. I must say I'm also quite impressed with the XT Z660 uh, Yamaha Tenere and uh, I've been thinking about getting another motorcycle this year as my XT660 is starting to show signs of wear and tear and age. I've been thinking about a Suzuki V-Strom or a Triumph Tiger. Um, I like, quite like the idea of having a motorcycle with uh, tubeless tires as in, case, as in case of a puncture it's easier to fix. But 
I think I really like the XT660, or oh, sorry, the uh, XTZ660 Tenor is so much that I might drop the idea of uh, having tubeless tires and stick with tube tires. Uh, we break down services quite being quite good in Europe and many other countries. I think I might manage somehow. Well, I've now ridden half the distance from Agadir to, oh, where am I going? Uh, Mar Marrakesh. It's been quite an interesting ride. Passing through the countryside, there were red mountains, and then suddenly everything changed into yellow. It's quite amazing. Just shows how varied this countryside here really is. Other motorcyclists also occasionally pass by. So Morocco really is a top destination for riders from Europe to experience something completely new. And it's so close as well. Brilliant. Motorway tour stations, just like in France, remind of the close ties and history that the two countries share, apart from everything being written in French and Arabic. Marrakesh now, an excellent day's riding, not arriving too late, so the city can still be explored. And again, roundabouts, traffic gives away. I love Morocco. <laughs>